As I listened to the bells of this cathedral peal just a little over an hour ago, I stopped what I was doing to give thanks to God for the pontificate of Benedict XVI. As has always been his manner, his style, the Holy Father took his leave from us today in a simple way, not seeking a triumphant farewell or a stream of public accolades. It has always been so for Benedict XVI. His ministry as a theologian, bishop, and pope has never been about himself. It has always been about the Lord Jesus. The prophet Jeremiah, echoing the words of the psalmist, reminds us today, blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose hope is the Lord. The one who truly trusts in the Lord will seek to do as the Lord commands. He will be obedient as a sign of love and self-sacrifice. His obedience will come from loving God and listening to God in prayer, from trusting in the Lord with all his heart, from knowing that God, in his infinite love, desires only what is best for us and will lead us to the waters of life the pastures of peace. Over many decades of brilliant theological work, Joseph Ratzinger contributed steadily and enthusiastically to the Church's understanding of its faith in Christ Jesus. And as Pope, he helped us to go even more deeply into the mystery of Christ, inviting us to delve more deeply into prayer, in holiness, in a living relationship with the Lord Jesus in the Church. He reached out to leaders and peoples of other faiths, recognizing our common love for God, our common desire to do good, our common responsibility to humanity and to God's creation. He reminded us to care for the poor, the suffering, the seeking, the lost, and in his own simple way lived the life of a disciple of Jesus, a servant of God, who sought out feet to wash. Before he was elected Pope, Joseph Ratzinger, once when he was commenting on the Gospel of Matthew, said this, at the moment when the Lord of the world comes and undertakes the slave's task of foot washing, which is in turn only an illustration of the way he washes our feet all through our lives, we have a totally different picture. God doesn't want to triumph or trample upon us, but kneels down before us so as to exalt us. The mystery of the greatness of God is seen precisely in the fact that he can be small. Only when power is changed from the inside and we accept Jesus and his way of life, whose whole self is there in the action of foot washing, only then can the world be healed and the people be able to live at peace with one another. It seems to me that in following Jesus' example of foot washing himself, desiring to be a servant of the church, not to be exalted in power as a world leader, but to show the humility of God, Pope Benedict XVI revealed Christ as the way to peace in the world, peace in the hearts of men and women. Through the years, Pope Benedict XVI had many opportunities to speak to seminarians, young men who were preparing for a life of ministry and service as priests. His words on the, such occasions, of course, were meant not only for those present who listened to him, but to all those who serve in the church, to all, in fact, who are disciples of the Lord Jesus. And during his memorable visit to the United States in 2008, when he gathered with a group of seminarians 
in New York, here's what the Pope said to them. I quote it to you because I think it's also a revealing insight into his own desire to live as a disciple of Jesus in a certain way. Here's what he said to the seminarians. I urge you, seminarians, to deepen your faith with Jesus, the Good Shepherd. Talk heart to heart with him. Reject any temptation to ostentation, careerism, or conceit. Strive for a pattern of life truly marked by charity, chastity, and humility in imitation of Christ, the eternal high priest of whom you are to be living icons. Dear seminarians, I pray for you daily. Remember that what counts before the Lord is to dwell in his love and to make his love shine forth for others. As I said, I think those words, in fact, are self-revelatory of the Holy Father's own desire to live in a certain way, in a simple way, as a disciple of Jesus. And so today, as the pontificate of Benedict XVI has come to an end, Many things are being said about his extraordinary legacy. It's very clear to me that this humble, prayerful, brilliant servant of the Lord wanted to do one thing above all, to proclaim Christ to us and to the world, to help us become true disciples and to teach us to open ourselves to the blessings that God wishes to lavish upon us in the gift of faith. Thank you, Holy Father, for teaching us Jesus and for helping us to be faithful to him. Thank you for making clear both the demanding cost and the glorious blessing of discipleship. Thank you for showing us by your very life what it means to be a true follower, a true disciple of Jesus. We owe you a debt of gratitude, and you will be always in our prayers. Amen.